I was not! My objection goes unnoticed. We stopped by to see how the mural turned out. Rid nods slowly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's right there. You can see it pretty clearly. I find myself wondering how long Rin's been standing here in front of the mural. Has anyone even stopped by to look at it? Are we the first ones? Obviously we're not the first to see it, of course. I mean, it's pretty big. You'd be hard-pressed not to see it. At the same time, I don't think anyone's actually talked to Rin about it. Anyone but us, that is. I feel compelled to say something. It looks pretty good. I'm still not happy with how it turned out. But I guess it'll do. She seems almost resigned to it. I'm not sure what she expected as a result, but I guess she didn't quite get there. We stand in front of the mural, taking it all in. I try my best to concentrate on the composition of the thing. It's actually fairly interesting. The colors swoop and blend together, dragging me along with them. There's a dreamlike quality to the whole thing that makes me almost feel sleepy. I try hunting out some of the colors Emmy and I grabbed for her. Try as I might, I can't see any Prussian blue. Oh well. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. My feet start to hurt, but Rin doesn't seem inclined to move on. Emmy speaks up. Hey Rin, have you eaten? Of course, you can't survive otherwise. What about in the past five hours? Hmm, maybe. But I'm hungry again, so maybe that means I'm wrong? Emmy grins and claps her hands together. Us. Rin nods in assent. Okay, but we should hurry before they notice I'm gone. Somehow I don't think they'd care. Whoever they are. As we head back to the food stalls, I cast a longing eye over at the fried food. No, I'd better not. I'm pretty sure Emmy wouldn't let me anyway. We find a nice spot on the grass and sit down to eat our purchases. Well, my purchases anyway. Somehow I wound up paying for all the food. Surprisingly, my unfried food is pretty good. Silence falls as Emmy and I eat as Ren stares at something or other, occasionally eating a bite or two of her food. I finish my meal first and lay back on the grass. Emmy glances up from her food. Just now? A little, I guess. Well, don't oversleep or anything tomorrow morning. We start our morning runs, remember? Actually, they'd slipped my mind. I was actually just enjoying myself. Wandering around the festival with these two has actually been fun. Yeah, I'll set an alarm. You'd better be there! I'll get angry if you aren't. God forbid. I don't think God comes into it. Unless there's some kind of freak accident and your alarm clock shorts out. That might be a random act of God. Well, don't cause any random acts of God then. A plan forms itself in my mind. It's a plan that makes me feel kind of guilty, but I throw into execution anyway. Damn it, I've earned a little fried food. And anyway, I'm going to start running tomorrow, right? So the actual routine all starts then, not now. Ergo, the dietary portion starts tomorrow too. Ergo, I can have something unhealthy today. A sort of final farewell to all the stuff I used to eat with a wild abandon before the hospital. Actually, I suppose I should head back to my room. I had some homework to do, and if I'm going to run in the morning, I should make it an early night. Those narrowed eyes again. 
You sure you're not just going to sneak off and buy some of that fried stuff over there? Nah, I'm too full to bother now. I pat my stomach for emphasis. Besides, you two have cleaned me out anyway. Emmy giggles. <laughs> it's a surprisingly pleasant sound. Another pang of guilt. She's got to know that I'm lying to her, doesn't she? Or is she just that trusting? I feel kind of like a monster. All part of my master plan, Hazal. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning then. And thanks for the food, and for keeping us company. And here I thought she was doing me a favor. Ren nods in agreement. I won't say see you tomorrow because that would be like predicting the future and I'm pretty sure I can't do that. Okay. Bye, you two. I felt oddly glad that I decided to leave my room today. Not a bad way to start my second week here, I suppose. Once I'm sure I'm out of Emmy's line of sight, I make a beeline for the food stands and buy some cake. At least it's not fried, right? That's slightly better than what I was planning to do. I still feel a little bad about lying to Emmy, though. She really does seem concerned about my health. I'll make it up to her somehow. Better head back to my room. Hey, I do have work to do. My book waits for me, and I flop on my bed and read through the fireworks display. Eventually, all the walking around, or more accurately, running around, catches up with me. I really am out of shape. And me dragging me out in the morning to run might just be a good thing after all. It's something to look forward to. My alarm's beeping shatters the early morning quiet, and I find myself wondering where to find the motivation to rise. Class is still quite far off, but I agreed to run with Emmy in the mornings. Really, I'm not that interested in running as a hobby or even as possibly life-lengthening exercise. However, I feel obligated to follow through on my promise to Emmy yesterday, which is why I find myself throwing on some running shorts and a light t-shirt. The cool morning air caresses my face as the morning sunshine causes the dew on the grass to sparkle, nearly blinding me at first. As I make my way down to the track, an ugly thought strikes me. What if this is some sort of joke that Emmy's playing on me? Would that surprise me, really? Hell, I'd probably do it to the new guy, too. At the very least, I'm sure Emmy and Ren made a bet on whether or not I'd actually show up. I feel a sense of trepidation as the track comes into view. You're late! It would seem that Emmy is already there. What a relief. Not according to my watch. We're both early, in fact. Damn! You've got me there! Emmy is sitting on the bleachers, decked out in a running gear, waiting somewhat patiently for me. I'm glad you're actually here. I was afraid this was a joke or something. Nah, I never make someone get up early for nothing. Plus, Rin owes me 500 yen now. She didn't think you'd actually show up. 
I knew it! Nice to know Emmy was on my side, at least. Emmy hops off the bleachers and begins stretching out. She's remarkably light, almost like a dancer. I set out to stretch as well, but then realized that I don't exactly remember how to stretch properly. It's been ages since I've stretched for anything, if you don't count my one stint at running last week. And even then, I don't think I actually stretched beforehand. The specter of my long hospital stay rises up again. I can't say I was all that active before the hospital stay, though, so maybe I'm just being morose. <laughs> Emmy giggles as she watches me stretch out. No, 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 Hisao. You've got to hold it for longer than that. I'm trying. It kind of hurts a little. <laughs> That's because you're out of shape. You've got to get some flexibility in you. Like this. To demonstrate, Emmy reaches down and puts her head through her legs. God bless you, Emmy. I see. Is that the sort of thing I should strive for? Of course. Flexibility is important for any runner. You'll be able to go faster the more you stretch out. That makes no sense to me, but Emmy seems to believe it's true. With Emmy's help, I managed to stretch myself out properly. I can't help but notice that when she thinks about how to explain things to me, her mouth scrunches up in concentration. It's adorable. Not bad, Isau. Come on, we better start running. We'll start off with just a mile, okay? That's four laps around the track. Got it? That sounds fine to me. This shouldn't be too hard, right? A hazy memory of running a mile for gym class surfaces in my mind. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Emmy sets a pretty good pace, and I fall in behind her. Try to keep up, okay, Hisao? Roger. We round the first curve without incident, though I can already feel my heart rate increasing slightly. By the second curve, I've started to breathe through my mouth. Emmy doesn't even seem to be breaking a sweat. As if to punctuate her superiority, she turns around and starts running backwards. Are you doing okay, Hisao? Never. Better. Oh, really? Maybe I should speed up then, hmm? Oh, no. I didn't want you to overex hurt yourself. My heavy panting and wheezing makes the statement less convincing than I had hoped. Emmy simply smiles and turns around again. You're the boss, Hisao. We'll stay at this pace. I get the feeling that I'm being mocked. If I weren't in such terrible shape, I'd probably feel offended. By the third lap, my breath is coming in ragged gasps. I'm also awash in my own sweat. Gross. We round the curve to start our fourth lap, and Emmy looks back at me with a grin. Here we go! She takes off at a blinding speed while I stubbornly stick to my slower pace. By the time I get to the first turn, she's already rounding the second. As I struggle across the back stretch, Emmy continues running and catches up to me. Come on, Hisao! You can do it! I'd answer her, but I'm too focused on getting air into my lungs and ignoring the burning in my leg muscles. Part of me wants to say something like, Maybe you can, but I'm about to die here! But again, I doubt I can actually form words right now. Emmy keeps pace with me as I round the second turn and cross the finish line. Her sprint seems to have gotten her sweating. This actually caused her shirt to turn slightly translucent. It seems she wears a black sports bra. I feel a vague stab of guilt for being the sort of guy who stares at a girl's chest, but my legs and chest are burning so badly I can't bring myself to care that much. Not bad for a first effort, Hisao. Kind of like you to say so. Emmy seems to be, if not out of breath, at least breathing a little more heavily than she was before she started running. It must have been the sprint that did it. Hey, I've got to get a few sprints in. You should walk around the track to cool down. 
Then we can stretch out and we'll be all done, okay? Sounds great. My legs are on fire, and my breathing is still heavy, but surprisingly my heart seems to be taking the strain well. Another triumph of medical science, I suppose. You should put your hands behind your head. It makes it easier to catch your breath. Surprisingly, she's right. I begin to stroll around the track, happy to feel my breath coming back to me. There's a blur as Emmy sprints by me. Watching her run is absolutely fascinating. It's not just because she's on prosthetics, though that is interesting. The really interesting thing is the way her face changes. I can only catch glimpses of it as she runs by, but her eyes seem to come alive with a sort of fierce joy. It's as if there's nothing else in the world but her in the track. By the time I've gotten to the final stretch, Emmy seems to have finished her sprinting. She's breathing heavily now, but she's wearing a satisfied grin on her face. She waves to me cheerily as I near her. Feeling better, right? Actually, yeah. Do you want to take another lap around with me? I've got to cool down too, you know. Part of me would rather sit down and not move, but something tells me that would be a bad idea. Besides, if I sit down, there may be no getting back up. Sure, why not? Emmy's got her hands bound her head now as well, which makes her seem very relaxed. The positioning of her arms also pulls her shirt up ever so slightly so that I can see a small strip of her belly. I do my best to act the gentleman and not look, but the contrast of her skin against her red running shorts is rather arresting. So, how do you feel, Hisao? Surprisingly good, actually. I'm sore and tired, but surprisingly good. As soon as I say it, I realize that it's true. Sure, part of me wants to lay down and die, but I feel like I've accomplished something. It's almost like a glow throughout my body that persists despite the soreness. Yeah, that's the runner's high. Runner's high? Yeah, it has something to do with... adrenaline? Emmy thinks for a moment as we walk, trying to remember. Then she shrugs and grins at me. I don't actually remember. It's a good feeling though, isn't it? Better than sex, right? I open my mouth to respond shortly before processing what she's just said. Ugh. Emmy watches my face for a few <laughs> moments before bursting into laughter. Sorry, sorry. I couldn't resist. You're just too easy. <laughs> Why did I agree to run with you again? Emmy just laughs harder. She takes a hold of my forearm and tilts it, allowing her to get a better view of my watch. Her face changes the moment she sees the time. Oh no! We better get a move on, Isao! Class is in an hour and I need to shower! I should probably do that as well. I need to see the nurse too. Maybe he'll write me a note for being late. Why do you need to see the nurse? Emmy points to her prosthetics, as if that would explain everything. It's important to check for irritation. You know, from sweat or friction, or anything. <laughs> Normally, I only go after practice, but if we're going to be doing these morning runs, then I guess I'll see them twice a day. Wait, so Emmy only started doing these runs since I showed up? If it's more convenient for you to run with me at a later time... Don't be silly! I've been meaning to start running in the morning for a while now. But if I didn't have a partner to run with, I'd be less likely to keep up a routine. It's always harder to blow off a commitment if you're going to let someone else down, you know. So you'll be my running partner for the mornings. We both need the exercise, so it all works out, don't you think? Yeah, perfect. Did it have to be me, though? Well, I guess I can't complain too much. Emmy's pretty fun to hang out with. And she's right. I do need the exercise. Doctor's orders, even. Emmy waves a quick goodbye to me. Right. I'm off. Come have lunch with us, okay? What? Lunch! You know, the meal, in the middle of the day. Come have it with us. Where? 
The rooftop. Rin likes it up there. When? Lunchtime. When else? That was a silly question. Yeah, but I sort of felt like I needed to ask all three for completeness sake. <laughs> Emmy laughs and grins. I don't think I've ever seen a girl smile so much before. Project.